Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk through the Material UI paper and card components. We're going to talk through the differences between these two components, the other components in the card family, show some examples, and hopefully give you a better understanding of how these components work in your apps. If you want to learn Material UI by looking at a completed project, we have a free template that you could download. If you go and check the link in the description, you can then see our template page here where you can go and view a live preview of the template and also download it. So check it out. We use the paper component in here as well as the card component and all kinds of charts and tables. We also let you change the color of the palette here up top and it's all mobile responsive and all that good stuff. So check it out in the description and now onto the video. Now paper and card are pretty much the same component, so we're gonna start with the paper component. So here we go, we are on the blog here, our blog, which has some code examples that we're gonna talk through if you wanna access these yourself. We'll have that link in the description as well. And so here you can see we have material UI paper component examples. So we're gonna go in and open that code sandbox here so we could see more about these examples. Now paper is a very simple component. It's just a single div with the box shadows and other uh, minor CSS properties on that. So here you can see we import paper from material UI slash core slash paper. And as you could see down here, we go and render that in our app over here. And as you could see here, it's a very simple usage of this component. We're just wrapping whatever components we want to go inside of that paper with the paper component. So the first thing that I want to share with you about this app specifically is that we have some styling. Now this is what Material UI uses to style the cards in their examples. So you can see here we have uh, a selector here which just selects any children of this container. So classes.root is the div wrapping all of these papers. And so we have some styling here. We have width, height, and some margin. And so that's what creates the width and the height of these papers. So we'll show in a second what happens when we toggle off that styling. But just know that this is the default usage of paper. So this is paper with the elevation prop. Now elevation is just going to point at your box shadow in the Material UI theme. So Material UI by default has a default theme and in there, there are various box shadow CSS properties. So when you say elevation six, it's just gonna look at the sixth index in that box shadow configuration. And we'll show what that looks like when we start looking at all of the CSS. Next paper, so you'd wanna set the background color uh, on the paper, right? One way to do that is by setting a class on the actual root element. So when you do this, you're setting a CSS class on this root element, which is just a single div. And so as you can see up here, what that does is that just sets the background color, just like any other div, you could set the background color. So we're setting the background color here and that just automatically gets applied there to that root element. So the other way to do that is you could set your paper uh, CSS um, inside of the material UI theme. So under the hood, material UI is looking at the paper uh, color inside of your um, theme to actually set that background color by default. And by default, the paper color is set to white. So if you wanna look into setting um, all the paper in your app to have the same color, you could set that in the Material UI's default theme. And so going down here, next we have Variant Outlined. All Variant Outline does is get rid of the uh, box shadow and instead use a single one pixel border. And the border is set to the divider color in your theme. So that's like a gray. Now, one thing I didn't talk about before I get to square, one thing I didn't talk about is the padding inside of the paper. So you can see here, we actually render a box inside of that paper. So if you don't know, box is just a generic element that you could use in Material UI to specify some padding. So you set, you could specify some padding, margin, but it comes with these shorthand styled system properties so you could easily create sort of this one-off padding component. When we get to explaining cards, you could just use the card content to set padding, which is what we'll talk through when we talk about cards shortly. But for now, we wanted to implement this without using any card uh, components. And so that's how we use padding here. The other way you could implement padding is if it, you added it here in the CSS class. So you could add, just like any other div, you could add padding. Here you could also add padding. We just chose to do this with a box so that we could say P equals one, and that points to the spacing properties in Material UI. So Material UI does has some spacing fixed values that you could set. So P equals one doesn't mean one pixel padding. It means, I think it's eight pixel padding. But we could actually look at that when we look at the, when we start diving into the CSS classes and what Material UI is doing under the hood. 
So now let's talk about the square prop. So square prop is just going to remove the border radius. So by default, I forget what the border radius is, but we talk through that here. So by default, the paper has a border radius of theme.shape.border radius. So you can see they, they specify a lot of different custom sizes out of the box, right? So in the Material UI's default theme, they are going to give you this hook so that if you want all the paper in your app to have a much wider border radius, you could do that here uh, by changing this. So that's the default border radius for paper. It's four pixels. And as you go, as you could see here, when we specify square, that just is going to make the borders square. And so get rid of the border radius and just that'd be zero. So, okay, so that's square. And then lastly, I just show you a custom border. If you want to do a custom border, same thing, specify that CSS class on the class name prop. And we, so that would just specify the border here like that. And then going down here to the, that's all the examples I give for here. I also show you a custom border radius. So that is here again, another CSS prop that we're specifying. So we're just showing you a couple examples of how you could modify this root element. So now let's go into actually how this implement, this component is implemented. If I go over here to the code sandbox app, I can actually open up the uh, Chrome dev tools here and I could look at the elements panel. And what I wanted to show here is that this component is not complicated. It's just a div. So at the end of the day, they are going to render this div, turn your react props into CSS classes and apply the right styles. So, this example here, there's no padding around here because this is the root paper. And if we go and click on this, we could see we have the, over here on the right, we have the style set from our app, which is the width, the height, and the margin. So the margin is, so eight pixels around every element. Now, if we get rid of the width, get rid of the height, and we get rid of the margin, so this is now no styles from our app is being applied it looks like this. So if you just use paper out of the box, it would look like this. So you could style them, copy these base styles for your app just to have on hand and create your own version of your own paper in your app if you want the same styles. But yeah, that's how this works. And so you could also put them in a grid and do different things with that, which we could also demo. But here we have, so let's go down to paper elevation. So as I mentioned, Material UI is going to have its own box shadows. So when we say elevation one, that's going to, I think the default here is elevation one. And so like, like we didn't specify any elevation prop in this component. So it's going to use the default box shadow found in Material UI's theme for uh, box shadows one. And so if we get rid of that. That's what that looks like. And then as I also mentioned, we have the border radius of four pixels there. So that is how these classes are being applied. We also have some other base styles here. Like I said, Material UI is gonna set the background color for you, add a box shadow transition, and also set the text color of that paper for you as well. So that is the general idea behind the paper component. It's pretty easy to explain because it's just a single div once again. So now let's talk about the Material UI card class. So in our paper example, we import a card just to show you what this looks like. So this is um, a card. And before we talk about all the other components inside of the card family, I do want to just mention the card component itself is just a paper component. So if you look at the source code for card, you could see here that it just renders a single paper component. And it does add an additional prop of elevation. So if you want to specify the raised prop, you can, that'll just set a eight elevation here on the paper. Otherwise, any other paper props that you pass in will get passed along to the paper. So card has the same prop signature as paper. So you could specify any of the other elevation, you know, square, you could set any of those other things and they'll be applied here. So let's try that elevation, like say that to 15. So that would work just the same there. So now let's talk about the other card components in the card family. So once again, on the blog here, we have other components that we render in the card. So we have the card content example, card air actions area example, card actions, the card header and the card media classes. And so these are also just briefly described here. But as I mentioned in here, card versus paper, card is just the same as the paper. 
and they are all fairly simple components, card content. We'll start with that, but most of these are just single div elements once again. So first I'll just kind of high level talk through all of these components. Card content is just a single div that applies 16 pixels of padding. So when you add a card content, so go in here, we could talk through these examples. So card content, it's just what you wrap the components in there in the card content. And that's just gonna add 16 pixels of padding. And the last group, uh, the last card content will get 24 pixels of padding on the bottom. So next is the card actions area. So this component is just wrapped in a button. And so there's a component called button base in Material UI, which is used for the button. But basically when you wrap the card actions area around your content, it creates a button. So you could use this for a link or other type of functionality if you want that in your card. And that second example is here. This is called card actions area. So just like the first example where we wrapped our content in a card content, we wrap our content in a card actions area and that gives you this functionality. And that's really it for this one. Just like this one's very simple, it's just 16 pixels of padding and the last, uh, so if you add multiple card contents, the last card content will always get uh, 24 pixels of padding. And so, yeah, that's, that's card content and I described card actions area, it's just a button around your components. Card actions is this thing here on the bottom. So card actions are just a simple flex box. So flex box will align your elements horizontally like this and you wrap your buttons or whatever you want in a card actions, you place it after a card content because the card actions will provide its own padding, eight pixels of padding around the card actions. And so you place this after the card content and you get this functionality. And there's also some padding between the children. There's eight pixels of padding between the children. And that's really all this component does there. I think I could, you know, I could confirm other props in there. If we look here, let's say look at the implementation of this component to, so just display flex, it aligns them vertically and it also puts eight pixels of margin between them. That's it, that's all it does. So this is a very short component. So that's card actions. You could use this anywhere, by the way, you could use these card components anywhere. You don't have to use them inside of a card. They, they'll work anywhere. So. Okay, that's card. Now moving back to the examples here once again. We're gonna open this up now. So now the next example is card header. Now card header, it's just another flex box that has uh, the center content being uh, flex grow and the rightmost component being an actions component which sticks to the top. So it aligns this to the top of the this flex box. So you just get some flex box spacing for these components and that's all this component does as well. So that's the card header example. And if I show you what that looks like, it just gives you an opportunity to specify something in the avatar, something in the action and something, uh, the title and the subheader, which are these text elements here. And so we could look at what that ends up looking like. If I go into this one, I could just briefly look at this. So you could see here we have card header root it's a flex box with 16 pixels of padding. So you could just drop this right inside of a card with hor or vertically aligned elements. So you see here, a line item center is gonna vertically align them. And then we have avatar header, we have margin right, 16 pixels. And then going down here, we have some spans which have some text. So that's all that happens when you specify the title or the subtitle or subheader. And so that's basically it. So you could put any component in here if you want. So if I, for example, add in another icon button. So now you can see we have two icons here. So that's the card header example. And then now finally, I wanted to talk about the card media example. So here at card media, all this is, is a image. So it's a, it's a div that specifies a background image. And so, that allows you to specify sort of a cover. So it's background size cover. It, it specifies that and it allows that image to stretch across the whole card. And so if we go here, we could see that if we go to card media over here, you could see here that we have just background size cover, background position center. So these are background properties. 
And then it specifies that to div by default. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So if we go back here, we could look at the card media example. You could see here, just to take a look deeper, this specifies a image, a background image. And the way that you specify that background image, if we go here in the example here. So you could see I am specifying the image here. I'm importing that image like this. And then I'm just specifying that in that image prop. And then we have class name. So I'm here, I'm also specifying a height. So you actually have to specify a height for this. So otherwise there just won't be a height and you won't see your image. So you have to specify a height that's not included. And then you also have a title, which so title is just gonna be the regular HTML title prop. 